In this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I am going to help you freaking slap with Aomer. This dude is amazing. One of the stronger tier 2 good commanders. And the build that I've been using is just fantastic. So let's go. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and I've got to give credit where credit is due. This build was presented to me by Pelshe Child. And I went in and I said, you know what? I'm I'm just going to try the all damage Aomar. I'm more of like a healing, you know, tanky cav kind of guy. But I'm going to go all in on the damage. And I have never, ever, not for a second, looked back. Because the healing build on Aomar is just inferior. And I get that with high damage commanders, what I call kind of glass cannon, you can do a lot of damage. Or sometimes take a lot of damage in the process. You... you you just don't have the same sturdiness as the healing commanders do. But when you catch one of your counters, one of the things that you counter off guard, you obliterate it. You catch a Gandalf with this guy, he's gone, man. Just gone. You catch an Arwen, destroyed. You find your counters in the field and you just obliterate them. And you do so much damage that, honestly, you'll just wreck a lot of things, but lose a lot of cavalry as well, potentially, in the process. So... The healing build that I used to recommend involved Aorid Leader and all the stuff at the higher levels of loyalty. And I found it all to be just not all that impressive. Like, I thought I was buying my way into a better version of Aowen. That's what Theoden is, in my opinion. I know people argue with that, but whatever. I, I would not go healing build. This is the build I would use. Start with Marshal of the Mark. This is giving you big damage and speed. You need to pick Marshal of the Mark first, by the way, because as I described in my tip video showcasing how it is that the turn order sequence is determined. The one you pick first happens first. So you want to pick Marshal of the Mark first, and I'll explain why in just a second. If you want to see that full video, by the way, cards up in the top. From there, you're going to get Swing, because I mean, obviously, Swing, lots of damage, piggybacking off of Marshal of the Mark. You want to get Rohirrim very, very, very quickly, because boosting your mounted unit damage is amazing. And I want to talk about this, this is one of the weaknesses of Aomar, so I'll get there in just a second. But Rohirrim is just so good. It's so busted. It's so broken on Cavalry Commanders. You basically have to pick it as a must-pick talent. And I really dislike when there are must-pick talents in games because it limits your options. Even though I'm trying to do all skill damage, you must, must, must improve your mounted unit damage by going with Rohirrim because behind it is also Cleave, an attack that is boosted by virtue of having more speed, okay? Okay. So speed is obviously the name of the game here. And then in the top end of things, you go with Edig and split between Edig and Attack the Vitals. But if you can actually max out Edig like I did, then you're going to want to max it and dump the remaining points into Attack the Vitals. Because, I mean, you do get a little bit of a speed boost here by 15, which is fine. It's fine. It's a, it's a nice little boost. And I'm trying to boost Aomer's damage, obviously. So this is a really great pickup. It's a very simple build. It's a lot of damage. I went with Attack the Vitals over Cole the Weak because I was more interested in just the raw damage numbers. I get that Cole the Weak could theoretically do more damage than Attack the Vitals by virtue of picking a weaker target. I suppose you could pick between the two. Depending on what you're fighting, that's an adjustment that you could ultimately make. And I have foregone point investment in improving my defense and riding excellence, reducing the damage that I take. This is why I say it's glass cannon. I have not invested in things to protect my cavalry. I protect them! By wrecking my enemies. That's the game plan. All in on damage. In this build, I, again, I, I would never look back. As far as the equipment goes, I'm all in on the commander damage. However, I have made few style choices here and a few choices based on limited equipment options. So I'm going to explain to you what the actual best equipment will be. And then from there, you can make your own choices as to what you actually have. So let me showcase what I'm rocking over here. At the epic tier, Cutlass is fantastic. This is what you would use. I think Flay is a great modifier, making it so the commander ignores some amount of the target's defense. Obviously, that's on plan for a commander doing lots of damage, right? However, uh, the other option that is here is something that boosts the, I think, the damage of your melee units. I would not recommend that route because, again, we're going in on commander damage. Cutlass gives might and speed and army attack for melee. 10 out of 10. Can recommend, right? Next item that's epic is the Scout's Mail. It's giving you speed. Speed is the name of the game. Commander speed specifically, not army speed. Commander speed makes it so that things like Rohirrim, 
I believe it's swing, get modified by virtue of that extra speed and you do more damage. Now I am using a shroud modifier, but there is a deftness modifier, which boosts your speed even more. I am kind of on the fence as to which one is actually better. Although other people seem to not be on the fence and think that it's just speed all the way, baby. I will say that because I already have more commander speed than pretty much anyone I've encountered all season, that makes it so that it's not like I'm trying to race the enemy commander to see who goes first. I'm going first. Unless you have the initiative, which is a separate matter entirely, I'm going to outspeed you otherwise with the equipment that I have, even though there is still a little bit of room for improvement over here on my helmet. Horseman's Helm is the obvious and pretty much like the... I don't want to say the only choice, but kind of the only choice. Like, dude, invest your legendary somewhere else. You have a horseman's helm you can use. It's so good. Like, you don't need a legendary helmet necessarily. I, I get that a legendary helmet maybe could be better, but might speed defensive mounted units. You're using all mounted units on this dude. It's so good. And the modifiers, as I talked about in my video with Epic Equipment, I'll have a card up in the top showcasing the very best epics and modifiers. Like, warding is just a fantastic modifier making it so you have a chance to avoid getting stunned. All of your allies, so that's your commander and your units, I believe, is just a fantastic modifier. You could go for the madness immunity, which would not be a bad choice if you're fighting a lot of evil. Um, and there is one other option, but I think stun and madness immunity are really where it's at. And more stun immunity, because you're more likely to fight a Gandalf. You're gonna wanna counter that stun to just absolutely savage, savage the Gandalfs, man. Now, the last thing I'm using is a Fiddle of the Eldest. This is, of course, a legendary tier item. I went all in on it because it just seems so, so strong for Aomer in particular. The focus I don't care about, but the commander speed, the army defense, the army speed, it's all just fantastic, man. Um, and I have Might of Soldiers, which is making some of my melee units do more damage. That is actually better on a commander like Aowen or a healing build where you're really trying to keep your troops alive so they do more damage. You uh, In a perfect world, I would have the commander damage modifier on this item so that I would do more damage with Aomer. And here is the funny and disappointing thing about Aomer. By the way, heroism is the name of that modifier. Max refinement is pretty disgusting. 18% commander damage at the cost of 6% unit damage. But, but as I was saying, here is the thing that's a little bit disappointing about the situation with Aomer is that because you're investing in Rohirrim, you're ultimately putting some amount of investment into your troops. Like, you only get benefit from this if your troops are still alive to do the damage in later turns, right? And in my perfect world, I'd be able to go kind of all in on just like a raw damage build. But his damage abilities aren't modified by anything other than speed over here and Rohirrim with extra speed and Cleave with extra speed is just so strong, especially because Marshal of the Mark gives you speed. And as I said earlier, I promised I would get to this. You want to pick Marshal of the Mark first so that it happens first in your turn order. You have more speed uh, for your cleave activating. So you just, you just do more damage by virtue of picking these skills in the right order. That's the way that you want to go. So in my perfect world, I could double down, I think, more on the commander damage. But the reality is that your damage and the reports you'll have from Aomer are going to be more split between commander damage and troop damage, at least with the way that I've built it. And maybe someone's going to roll up and be like, bro, trust me, the way to actually do it is like with Call the Weak and you should be maxing Attack the Vitals and you should be ignoring Rohirrim. And maybe it's possible, man. Maybe they would say, oh, instead of Rohirrim, you should do Aorid Leader with the healing and flanking and you know, prioritizes range units. Maybe, could be. I'd be open to it. But again, we're mixing at that point the blend of what I think you want to be doing, which is things that boost your units versus things that just make you a a, just a monster damage deal. So that's the build that I've got for Aomer. And as far as some of the like perfect items might be that you would put onto Aomer, if I just make my way to the Mathem Exchange and to the Antiquities, I can show you even the items I don't have. For Flawless Equipment, the weapon that you're really looking for is the Reach of the Ritter Mark. That is Might Speed Mounted Unit Speed with an appropriate modifier. That's the direction you would want to go. And for armor, let's see here. You have, I guess, a couple options, but I just want to emphasize that like the epics are so good. You could just stick with the epics. They're so perfectly itemized. 
perfectly itemized that you don't need to go somewhere else. But if you wanted to upgrade and you were looking for the legendary tier, the thing that I would ultimately recommend to you, and I do have one of these. Maybe I should show you the one I have. It's Warborn Battleplate. Might, army defense, army speed is very good. This is, however, missing commander speed. I just want to call your attention to that because I, th I do think that is a flaw. The other alternative here is Ranger's Shroud. Might, speed, attack of ranged. Okay, there's a little bit of anti-synergy, and that's why I'm kind of shrugging between the Cutlass and the Ranger's Shroud. Cutlass is doing melee attack damage. Well, you kind of want to have all melee units to take full advantage of that, right? But this is giving you ranged attack damage. Well, I, I'm not using any ranged units. And that's in part because the only ranged unit that's mounted is a bow knight, which is only good against large units. So I don't really want to bring it unless I think they've got large units. Otherwise, I'd rather be doing other things. I'd rather have other abilities on my units, right? And I, I can review maybe some helmets here that you might consider with speed, perhaps. I don't even know if there is a great legendary helmet. There, there might be. I, I actually, I actually haven't even considered it. No, I don't think there is. There, I mean, look, maybe, okay. I don't think there is, he says. But, you know, like maybe you go with the cask of the uh, submerged isle, right? And you pick a modifier that makes you immune to stun and madness. And like, okay, that would be better. It's very expensive for what you're getting and you don't have as much speed and you don't have the mounted unit defense, but like you could do that or... You can just stick with epics on this commander for that spot and deploy your precious legendaries somewhere else, which would be my recommendation. So as far as the unit composition goes here, um, as I have a display on my screen, hilariously, this is not the first time this has happened that I can't get rid of. There we get. Nope. Still there. Okay. I'm pretty sure I can get rid of this somehow. Maybe I've gone here, there, tap a couple things. Oh my gosh. Oh, we did it. We're free. We're free of the curse. No, I'm not. GG, man. BRB. Okay, now that I've cleared that up, the unit composition, this time for real. So here's what I'm using, and I've got to say I'm Gondor, so I get the Swan Knight. And that's why I went with Aomer, actually, because what I want to do is have lots of units live for as long as possible. Keep me honest on this, but is the commander's damage based off of the amount of troops that they have remaining? Is that a thing? Is the amount of damage they do at all related to the number of troops you have left in your army? Either way, I have this, this unit right over here, baby, the Swan Knight. And the thing that's so crazy about the Swan Knight is that it's going to protect all my other units from normal attacks, which means I can bring a lot of other high damage units. Now, the other thing I've done is I've used three units. I want the damage to be kind of spread around. Maybe that's not something I need to do. Maybe um, now that I have reached a state of the season where I can actually keep my barracks full, I don't need to use three unit types anymore. Otherwise, I can't maintain enough of these troops to fill the army. You see what I mean? Like, maybe in that perfect world, now that I'm in the end game where it kind of doesn't matter anymore, maybe the perfect world would be just the Swan Knights and the Cavaliers. Or even better would be just the Swan Knights with a bunch of Bree Riders. These are combinations that were not viable for me during the season because we didn't have that many troops to work with. We were constantly running low on troops. I could not just put two units in here and be like, oh yeah, I'll use like, you know, 3,000 Cavaliers because I was going to run out of Cavaliers after like two attacks if I, I ran the comp that way. So I also ran some cats in here just to have a tanky third unit. Um, that absorbed some of the damage and just survived. Uh, but I think in my perfect world, what I might actually do is swap out the cats and bring in the Bree Riders as a really nice substitute. And for whatever reason here, let's see. Yeah, that's actually, that's probably the balance of how I would run this, right? Um, You don't want to have too many Swan Knights because otherwise, really, they're just there as fodder. Like they are there to die at the start of the fight, and then you don't want them in your composition anymore. Do so you want just enough to last the few turns they protect everybody because they have a you know really nice defense boost? And after that point, they're actually just weaker than having a cat. But I'm getting ahead of myself because you probably don't have Bree Riders and you probably don't have Cataphracts. Probably what your Aomer composition is going to be is one of two things. 
depending on your equipment and depending on you, how you kind of feel about the itemization, you could use a pretty standard composition of cats in front and bow knights in back. I still don't personally like the fact that the bow knight is just really good against large units. I mean, I guess if you're fighting evil, that's cool. Uh, but I, I would kind of prefer to have just like lots of front loaded damage. But that also means you're going to lose a lot of troops, which you were going to do anyways with Ammer. It's not like you were protecting your troops with Ammer. That's the, not what the build I'm using, man. So uh, all in on like Cavaliers, you could have 100% Cavaliers. You do a lot of damage at the start, just like really wreck them. Uh, you could do that blend of frontline cats and also Cavaliers. But for me personally, because I have the Cutlass, which I think you should be using, which improves melee unit damage. And because I have the Fiddle, which is boosting uh, my melee unit damage by 6%. That's a big damage boost. I'm all in on melee units, man. I'm all in. I actually really like this composition so much that I'm I'm going to switch to it right now. I'm in. Let's give it a try. I think that seems really fantastic. I've achieved, like, we're only mid-season, but we, we're now escape velocity on troops. We've got the resources that, like, it just doesn't matter anymore. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to mention just the fact that when I would use... Like, in my perfect world, just just the ideal unit. Um, you know, if I didn't have Bree Riders and I just all went 100% Cavaliers, the problem is that you just can't build that many Cavaliers that quickly. You will run out. Um, and so I think it's just kind of unrealistic to make that recommendation. Now, there are other special units for Cavalry. I mean, the Rohan special unit for Cavalry is obviously just straight up better than a Cavalier. So if you had that T4, you'd like throw it in here and you just smash with it. I didn't particularly like the Ram Riders. You, you may actually find that somewhat surprising. Um, but, you, you, right? Because you might be like, wait, whoa, 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 Chiskel, why did you not talk about Ram Riders? Maybe I am crazy. And you you know what? Call me out on it. Just You can, you can call me out on it and say, Chiskel, I don't know, man. You should try some Ram Riders. Maybe I should. I found that I, when I was using Ram Riders, man, these things just, they just die so fast. I don't know that the defense reduction was worth it to me, which sounds kind of weird. Um, also, I was running a couple other units, and I could just only train so many things so fast in my season. So it could be that I need to go and revisit the Ram Riders, because obviously a defense reduction sounds really good. But with the weapon I'm using, I'm already reducing the defense of the target pretty substantially. Um, so as long as my units are alive to do lots of damage, they will do lots of damage because of the stuff that I've already got them set up with. So Ram Riders are another consideration that I think would be totally fair to go and give it a shot. Maybe now at this point in the season, Bree Riders, Ram Riders, uh, and my Swan Knights will be the play. There's a lot of great configurations. And, and even if you think my configuration is suboptimal, man, I have been just crushing it with Aomer all season long. Just having a great time. He is one of my favorite commanders, and in my perfect world, I would be able to get him to the highest levels of loyalty, uh, and specifically highest levels. I don't know. I guess level 10 is what I'm trying to say, so that I could get his weapon, because with this weapon, oh my god, with this weapon, each round, Aomer and his army gain the following. Increase Aomer's next damage dealt by 10% when speed reaches 200. Well, I mean, like, okay, yeah, you're going to do that. And then allied mounted units have priority in attacking enemy ranged units. Oh, my God. Right? Like, that just seems so good when your speed reaches 350. I mean, my speed, pretty sure my speed's up at 400. And again, I could have a modifier for more speed if I wanted on the scout's mail. Yeah, 400 speed is pretty decent here. Uh, and there is a blue weapon you could use if you are in the department for the budget version of this commander. And like many people are. And so you could just use a ranger's dagger. Really solid, man. Even just talking through all this, I've thought of a few optimizations, including revisiting those ram riders, which I found to really just be like paper dragons, so to speak. But minus the dragon part, more like just paper. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that. You tell me. I'm, I, I could try it. I mean, look, look at this. The resources are full. The barracks is full. It's just like, whatever. It's the it's the mid-season point, but I've talked enough about Ammer. I'm eager for your thoughts down below in the comments. Is this build worthy? Will you give it a try? What do you think?
And until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies. <laughs>